And welcome back one last time today. So we thought we would end doing something completely different. We haven't done this before, and this is gonna be a really unique experience if you were thinking about a toy hauler. How easy are they to use? How fun are they to use? So we're gonna get our good friend Mark Anderson here. Mark, come on in here, because this is a, a, a great idea morning. that you had. Good morning to you. Um, the way that this show works, and we've talked about it, is it's a, it's a dealer show. They come in and they place their orders, and uh, one of Mark's uh, a dealers out of Cabano, mm -hmm. right? North of Maine, North yes. North of Maine, uh, is actually going to drive away with this outlaw today. And so what we're going to do is Mark is going to walk through uh, with, uh, with our, our good friends from the dealership and kind of show them how to use it. But we wanted to take you along on the journey as well so you kind of get the nuts and bolts and every single how-to and your questions answered. So if you are a current outlaw owner or maybe you're thinking about one, this is everything you need to know all wrapped up in a nutshell. So Mark, I'm going to let you turn it over. I'm going to turn it over to you and kind of let you take us through how everything works and what an outlaw is all about. Well, and, and two, what we're going to do, this will cover Miramar Challenger. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not just going to be right. about that. And this is Martin. Hey. Uh, thank you for doing yeah. this with us. And uh, we're just going to jive in. All right. So when we get up front, um, we're going to have the cameras in the mirror, of course, um, three in protection on the front uh, now for 19s. But when you turn your left or right blinker on, it's going to show a, a, a picture in your screen. You don't want to focus a lot of time on that, but keep that in mind. So left blinker, left side, right blinker, right side. And then you go to your settings and change to your rear camera and have that in motion. So you've got a tow vehicle you're taking yep. back. So you could watch that go back as you're riding down the road and hit settings and go to rear camera uh, and, and look at that. So that's a nice feature. Uh, moving down, frameless windows. Um, so the beauty of the frameless window is that's not going to have your sill exposed to the UV rays. Uh, it's that simple, and again, everything in this coach is going to be sitting on aluminum studs. Um, so the only thing that's not framed in aluminum on this unit would be that outlet right there because that has power going to it. So if you were to loosen up and hit the aluminum, it'd send current through the sidewall, where most RVs are just going to route out all the openings and use the window as framing. We go in and put studs in all those openings, and, and I spend a lot of time talking about that because it's the difference in how RVs are built. Um, moving on down, you're going to have Sickens Automotive paint, uh, paint on this unit, and that the difference is, uh, to make everybody clear, this is not a $50,000 paint job, but it's the best paint in the industry. If we spent the time and money it takes to do like a, a paint job on a Porsche or Ferrari, which is the same paint they use, um, is, is you got to think it's 38 foot, but the difference with Sickens, you won't get stress cracked because this never hardens. So say you got your keys on your side and you brush up against it and get a scratch on it, just come with like, I mean, you can take your shirt off and start rubbing on it and warm it up and you'll see it kind of fade away. So make sure if you see anything or, or when you're washing it, you know, never use a bucket. Um, you know, a lot of guys will get down here with a bucket and some Dawn, which Dawn is fine, but all you're doing is getting the dirt off of it, putting it in there, and then putting it back, and you'll get swirl marks. Um, so what I like to mend for cleaning is take a, just a brush, bottle of Dawn, wash your section, wash that off, wash your brush off, and keep moving, and you'll notice you won't get those swirl marks in it because you're not rubbing it with dirt. Um, so we've got the awnings here. Uh, we'll do the front. You've got the UV protection uh, on that. So that thickness right there is just to keep the sun off of your main awning. Um, these will come out. And remember, these are all remotes. So you slip a battery in, take a battery out, and then hold both uh, buttons down, and it'll sync to the system. And we'll go more into that. But each one of these remotes is going to operate where you're at in the coach. You know what I mean? So there'll be one in the rear. And that's going to operate everything in the rear, one in front, stuff in the front, and so on. So uh, know that. we got the LED strip on there and so on. You can adjust these awnings. You know, a lot of people say you can't adjust these, but you want to let it about halfway out, push the button in, tilt left or right. So if your entrance to your campgrounds here, I can tilt that back, shoot the water there. Or if the air conditioner water, just stuff like that. But remember, um, not to pinch yourself, but you'll push those in and actuate that awning. And then mainly, um, it, you know, if I'm going to leave this RV for the day, you could do like a bungee cord with a stent, uh, tent stake in the ground, but just put it back in because all it takes is one good gust 
just the materials, you know, six, seven hundred bucks. So I always would let it in because all it takes is just a quick storm popping up. Um, moving on in, handles mounted to EGS steel strap, and we put steel in all our sidewalls to mount all our cabinets and stuff. Um, Rotocast storage compartment, this is not going to rust mold or mildew. And the difference in that, um, some coaches still offer steel down here. And when you come into a um, different situation, it's going to start rusting on you. We've been doing this for a long time, and it works. 300 pounds per compartment. And then you've got the angle here where most RVs might be level. <laughs> what happens when you get in a heavy rain, it'll drift into your storage compartment. So again, we're going to put a nice angle. And then another thing, more ride cuts all this steel. Um, if you ever look at uh, some RVs, they're going to rough cut the metal, and then what happens is the bulb steel won't stay on it, uh, the bulb seal. Um, so again, that's all laser cut by a computer by Morad. Uh, so there's no playing around with this stuff. You've got your rails that are going to be mounted, and that guarantees a level foundation. So no greater variance of .008 from the front right corner to the back opposite. Because if you don't have a level foundation, you put a box on it, and you go over a railroad track, it's not going to actuate together. It's like a plane would. Um, so again, key stuff. This chassis is a 26,000-pound chassis. It only comes from Ford with two drive shafts. Okay? Now, there's four drive shafts on this RV, and, and, and that's the question you want to ask these other manufacturers. Who's doing that for you? Morad does all that. They put four drive shafts on a machine, and balance them all together. Where some RV manufacturers or, or whoever, they're gonna balance one at a time, put them all four together and hope they run true. Um, where we're gonna spin all four drive shafts at so many RPMs to know they run true. And again, if you have a drive shaft issue from start, it's very hard to obtain. And remember, <laughs> if you have a unauthorized company doing welding on a chassis from Ford or other manufacturers, it will void warranties. Uh, that's why we use more ride on any of our upfitting. Uh, moving on down, uh, outside TV, it's going to swivel turn. Bluetooth, that all connects to Bluetooth. And you guys that have questions, we've got all that stuff online. You can check it out. That'll spin either way. Um, and, and remember, while we use soundbar. Yep, soundbar, and then it's a Bluetooth as well. Uh, but remember, you know, if people talk about TVs. Yes, this is a cheap TV, but a cheap TV, you've got two TV manufacturers in the world. And you throw a high dollar TV out here and mount it solid, it's done a couple of years. Um, the components inside are what determines how long it lasts or how good the picture is. But again, putting a high dollar TV out and driving it down the road, it's only going to have so many vibrations and it's over. So remember why we do that. I mean, we could put money in a very expensive TV out here but we're not going to do that, okay? Um, moving on down, just more storage. You got your power outlets here. That's going to be 110 off your generator shoreline. And this will be your gravity tank fill. I forgot the key. Turn the key, but the reason you do <coughs> gravity fill is, is for off the grid camping. You know, if you want to go out somewhere for two weeks and you're by a lake and you run out of fresh water, guess what? Open this up, five gallon bucket and put water in there because most RVs you have to have pressure to get it over to it. So again, you can fill that up at home, but again, this is made to do what you want to do, not what somebody's telling you what to do. And that's what I like about this coach. 100 gallon fresh water, tank sensors are behind this panel. All our tank sensors are on the exterior of the tank. So if you get that black tank that's reading 33%, you go in there, pull that sensor out, put another probe in, you're done. You're not dropping the black tank to clean stuff off the sensor and then mounting that back. So that's a big deal for me. Got the quick release and then remember, um, this is gonna be a heated area. Uh, we got into that briefly yesterday and, and guys, make sure you're paying attention, but anywhere on this coach is water system heat. We, we, we talked about that briefly, but know if you've got your furnace on, it's blowing heat wherever there's water, okay? Not in every bay, okay? So again, if you're gonna experience cold weather camping, be smart. You know, go out there, put a temperature gauge, a digital, and monitor that. If you know if it's going to be cold, take five minutes, walk outside, double check that you didn't throw a lounge chair or something in a compartment, whatever, and then just monitor it. Remember, your furnace has to be on. You know what I mean? So if you're going to go somewhere for a while, remember you might take an extra propane tank. 
Uh, there's, there's, there's several different ways out there, but you need to educate yourselves so you know what you're doing. You know what I mean? And it takes minimal effort, but if you have no effort, a lot of things can go wrong there. So moving on down, Swintech, all our seals are in tracks, you know. This is something we talk about, but the beauty of this is, is as a customer uh, buys this from you down the road, they could call you, order these seals, and switch them out because they're not glued on. You know, so many RVs out there are glued on and the seal's smaller, so the problem with that is once it comes off and you've got road debris, I mean, chances of you getting that thing to stay is slim to none. All our seals are in tracks. It doesn't matter if it's a 22-foot Class C like you do as well, the Ace. Um, so you could do that with any of our products. We don't change that because it's better on a high end than not do it on a low end. Uh, I, I, that's the one thing I like about my company is we're not perfect, but if you're doing something right, why would you change it in a price point? You know what I mean? And I'm talking about nuts and bolts and, and building materials. Uh, just keep on moving. Um, wrong door. Swintech, don't spray lubricants on that. If you keep it clean, it'll take care of you. You start putting, you know, a, a dry lubricant, you know, is okay. But, you know, I recommend if you keep it clean, you don't have to do stuff like that. So you start spraying a, a, like a, let's just use the WD-40, for instance. It's grabbing dirt and throwing it on your tracks. So just, you're not going to need to do that. <laughs> um, again, if we can get down um, for one second and show these clients this box, um, this box tells you everything. And we went over this briefly, uh, but again, if you look right here, if you pull these plugs out, take the jacks manual, put this side down a little bit, two guys push the slide out in, okay? There's a lot of different features, but what I like about it, it's never gonna leave, especially a guy like you stuck. You can always overcome where you're not gonna sit somewhere and wanna wait for a technician. You know, you're, you wanna be on the road. That's what I like about Swintech. Right now we've got a code flashing, and what we're gonna do later is reset the Swintech and get rid of the code. The reason this is flashing is because people have been in high of this coach and not know what they're doing. So when you see a flash on this box, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be from operating the slides without the generator or shoreline or not holding extend or retract down long enough. So we'll put that to test here in a little bit and show customers yep. that. But remember, most of these boxes, your, your, your driver's side slide out is usually up underneath it in a storage. Usually a bed slide is underneath the bed unless you have room. So an Ace, you know, Hurricane Windsport, probably be up underneath the bed because it's a smaller rail. But with our big rails, we kind of like to put it outside. So <laughs> remember, if you've got three slides on your unit and a drop bunk, there's going to be four of these boxes. Two slides, two boxes. So one box controls two motors, and we'll go into that later. Okay? Let's move on down. <laughs> now, the one thing, too, especially when it comes to the Schwintech motors, if when we go over this, we have made videos on how to reset all of those. So we can get you that link and just how easy it is to take and unplug. And there's a button in there, and you press, I believe, it seven times. Well, and that, that does, a, yeah. it gives you 30 seconds yep. to go back in and retract it. But it says that on all yep. the boxes and, and, and on the videos. And too. so you can go back and watch this or on our, our YouTube channel, and we'll get Mark to get you the link. So there's all those little guides on there to kind of give you a refresher. So don't forget to check those out. So Mark, back uh, is where we are. Valve's 10 extensions, best, uh, best tires in the business. Uh, the Michelin 19 and a halfs. I'm not crazy about the Mission 22 and a half. I am crazy about if you keep the sun off this tire and balance the tires after you get the coach loaded. You know, you're taking it north, won't really be a big deal, but once you get this thing, a customer gets this thing loaded up, that's when you take it and get it aligned. And guys say, well, y'all should do that from the factory. Well, we can't because we don't know. You might put a lot more application in here or something else and just get it close. You know, if you're gonna have uh, 20 gallons of water usually in your 100 gallon balance and 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 do that with that water in there You know and if you got the right side heavy try to got to get your weight out uh, And then have your tires aligned if you do that and yes, it's going to cost you a couple hundred bucks But these tires will never go bad if you keep the UV rays off of them I mean they're take the pressure point, you know another thing that's people don't talk about is see the flat spot on this tire the worst thing you can do with an RV, if you ever have a test drive and you get out and it rides rough, the reason why is the coach's been sitting on a lot, flat spots on the tires. 
get out there about 30 minutes, you'll notice it riding better because the steel belts have now got back into true round because that's the difference with this size tire versus like an Ace. It has a 19 and a half aluminum, I mean steel wheel. This is 22 and a half aluminum. Less rotation is better ride. So again, when you get out on the road, warm those tires up, you'll notice a better ride, but do your alignments and then Ford will stand behind, we stand behind the warranty, but we can't stand behind something if we don't know what the customer's doing. So just do the right thing with that and we'll keep moving. Um, moving on down, we got another awning here. Uh, I'm not gonna take the time to let that out. Slide topper standard and again, Everything on this coach is pretty much standard. It sets some dual pane applications and some couch applications. Uh, so everything's gonna be on this. Got the D-ring for the dog, uh, the grill, the um, whatever it might be. You know, you got a Harley out here, um, you know, paint the picture of what it's gonna be. So just more storage back here. And then you got the propane connection here for your gas grill. And you guys that are getting started, you know, my dad loves the grill, but you know, he got the grill kind of close to the house and you can tell. So when you get when you got a grill going out here, get that thing out here. That's why we don't put them on there. Um, you don't want any kind of heat. Pay attention to wind and stuff. Um, and if it was me, I'd probably come around here a little bit with it. But that's just knowing's half the battle. Um, what I'll do now is go and we'll look at the back. The option, <coughs> the steps comes standard with the GP, the porch model. This is not. This is an RB. Uh, but you can, you can get with your local dealer or you can get with Cabanos and order a step and that's going to pop right in. This is all done by Morad. It's got a support here so you can get rid of this uh, cable and now have an entrance up here. Um, but we just do it standard on the GP because it has two porches, uh, so to speak. So don't confuse that, that it comes with an RB or a new MB. It doesn't come standard with that. And so You've got a key unlock here. Remember, you have to have power to unlock this thing, right? And then you'll have a power um, lock here. And then you also have a safety override if no, you don't have power. It's inside yellow strap. So again, this is not going to operate unless you've got your disconnect on. But uh, you'll have a little key in several different ways. And what I'll do real quick is go in and demo putting it up and then show you the rear of the coach. Y'all can just stay out and I'll be right up there. All right, so this is the Moride Zero-G ram door in the patio system. So Mark's going to close it up and show you just how easy it is to put this together. Hopefully. And then, uh, <laughs> and then we'll go ahead and close the door. And so we want to just kind of set that right yep. there, push these down, pull it. This will slide in. And I like to try to do it as I go. That'll kind of slide over that, slide in, and just work your way around. Just that easy. The one thing too is your back there, Mark. Point out the new uh, patio wall armor screen doors because that's such yeah, an upgrade it, from the, from you the know, screen. It is. The fifth wheels have been doing this a while. You'll just slide it down. You can slide these up and down. You can lock it. So um, you guys that own Outlaws, we got it now. Yeah. You know what I mean? You've seen this application. The, the units in this show are the first ones that have it. So don't get that confused out on your dealer's lots. Um, so we just started that in production. So that's uh, something that's been, it'll fold open and stuff like that. Um, so let's get this up. So we'll come up with it. Make sure your cables don't do that. I like to do that, let it sit, check the cable, and you're done. Okay, so it's that easy and light. And remember, <clears throat> this isn't new. Uh, we've been doing this for a while. So you got the power awning on the rear on the A, manual on the C, okay? Uh, you've already put the outlaw thing on there that's nice, comes with a mud flap. <laughs> Remember, this is an 8,000 pound hitch. So you can pull 8,000 pounds, you can do a lot of things, but you can't do both. You can't load it down with bricks and pull 8,000 pounds. So if you've got a heavy load, make sure you're watching your capacities inside. Uh, so we've got different things on that. Seven way round comes with plug and play underneath the steering column. So brake controllers, uh, stuff like that, you just plug that in and you're done. Don't mount holes in your wall up by your driver's seat or stuff like that. Uh, that's pretty much it. Got the tag lights, stuff like that. Moving on around. Remote fuel station, 29 gallon separate fuel tank. So open up your minds to this fresh water. So you got 100 on this. 
Uh, there's 29 gallons of extra water that goes in here. Don't get that confused with the 80 gallon. Okay, all class A's are 80 gallon fuel tank. But again, diesel, kerosene, you know, know what you're doing out there, but you could use this for whatever you want to do, whatever it is you want to do out there, but it's got a separate fuel tank. Hunter, you know, high octane fuel for a racing bike, whatever it might be. Um, it's got a power ground and then your stuff will be right here. Make sure you're reading your directions. Make sure you don't have stuff on that, because uh, when you're putting gas in, you want to watch fumes, stuff like that. Um, that'll be that. You got your vents for the garage. So if you got that leaky motorcycle, which, you know, probably get that fixed before you throw it in here, you could open that and vent it. But um, realistically, uh, you should have that stuff fixed before you put it in. But if you do have something that smells, you can open the two and not have that in the coach, okay? Or in the garage, it wouldn't be in the coach. More storage here. Fuel, unleaded fuel only, 80 gallon again. Don't get that confused with the 29 separate. You can put 29 gallons more of gas in there and whoop, run it right in there so you get that another couple of days out of a generator. So a lot of good stuff there. <laughs> 50 amp service with a TV plug. Make sure that you're, um, you're running this stuff right. Um, you got all your connections right here. This is the transfer switch. And what I like about a transfer switch, we put it on all our products. You don't have to plug it back into itself but also that's going to catch most of your electrical problems. So, you know, you say uh, get struck by lightning in a park or something, nine times out of 10, there's always you want to protect yourself. That's usually going to go before it gets inside the coach. Don't get this confused. You guys out there got 30 amp, don't get it confused with a dryer plug. You know, you've got to make sure it's 30 amp or 50 amp. Now, you can always pigtail down, but you're only going to have so many options. So know your coach, you know, this coach will run a lot of things off of 30 amps. So just if you got a part with 30 amps, so what? But no, you'll have to adjust because you can't have everything going. Uh, on 50 amp, you could have everything going on this. And if you throw a, blow, uh, a blow dryer and it might kick a breaker, but that's it. But know that this is, this is gonna work for you. Um, continuous hot water heater. <laughs> the main thing with this is focus on ground temperature of water. Um, if you're not getting cold, it's because it's coming out of the ground at 50 degrees or whatever. It's hitting a pipe. We got a flame blowing on it. So you could bring that up. You could pull off your fresh water, have a 12 volt hose. But remember, most of the problems with continuous hot water is ground temperature water because all campgrounds are usually well water. Okay, so you can overcome that easy, but that's the only thing I've heard. You don't have to winterize these. Make sure you drain out your coach. Um, no necking behind it a lot less weight. There's a lot of advantages to it out there in the market. So uh, nice, that'll run, I think, 19 minutes uh, total uh, on your coach, okay? Moving on down, just more storage here. Uh, got the inverter there, place for your ladder for your bunk. So a lot going on here, fresh water pump outside. Most RVs, you don't see this because they're up inside, inside of a, a closet. So again, if you get to a campground and you just, you gotta think this is a new coach. So if it has a little trash in there, you can dump it out and clean it. But what I'm getting at is most RVs don't have this outside, it's up inside. So the beauty of this, you can replace it, but also it won't flood your coach. Okay, so you're not going to have that up inside. Remember, this is heated, okay? So moving on down, outdoor shower. Um, Anderson System is going to tell you how to do it. Uh, for me personally, I would blow out my coach and not use three gallons of antifreeze. Uh, you can do different things with that, but you need to know what you're doing before you winterize a coach. Um, so check that out. Everybody's got different systems, but if there's no water in the system, it can't freeze. Okay, so remember, if you're using this in cold weather, you've got to have the furnace on to keep it from freezing up. If you're going to uh, winterize it, make sure all the water's out of your necking, everything, and you can come put just something in a P-trap and be done with it instead of putting three gallons, but you've got to know what you're doing. Full house filtration system, uh, you got your tank flush, and this spins, you know, I don't know if you can get down low enough. I see this on uh, different things, but this is going to spin. So the main feature of that is it's not dripping feces and urine after you've dumped. 
in this compartment. So now you can put something in here, maybe a toolbox, garden hose, whatever it might be, but that's a big deal. So no, we do that in all our products that have black and gray coming to the main head. Um, you've got your Anderson system here. It's going to tell you everything to do. And remember, we talked about it briefly yesterday. You want to keep these close. I mean, some people leave it open to a, a septic while they're camping. Uh, me, I'm not really wanting to bring all that back into the coach. So, and tanks work better when they have stuff in them. So if you keep the black and gray closed, you know, and you've been there a day and a half, well, I'll dump it and it all comes out, and close them back, and you're not sucking those fumes back up in your coach. We got the 360 siphon on top, but again, no one's half the battle. Um, just any other questions outside we can hit later. This is a full house filtration. Um, low point drains, pretty self-explanatory. Outside LED lights, you can hit the button inside as you come out. Every light in the cargo comes on for 19 minutes and it shuts off. So way ahead of a lot of stuff out there. These won't get hot, won't catch on fire if you leave them on. So Onan generator real quick. We're gonna do um, a brief uh, education on this. So when you start this, they got it disconnected maybe. You have two breakers here. So remember if you're not getting power to the back right, off your generator, nine times out of 10, if you come outside, it's gonna be blown, just flip it back. Same thing, front half of the coach, flip it back. So remember, you got your breaker here. Um, you know, people change oils at different things. If it was me, I'd change my oil once a year, depending on how you're using it. I mean, it's minimum dollars spent to make sure you're protecting yourself. You're also out here checking it, and it makes you aware of what's going on with your RV. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do with that. So Onan 5500, uh, and the beauty of this is Cummins, uh, used to, it's hard to get service with ODAM, but now when they've merged with Cummins, which has been a long time, service availability is a lot greater, okay? <laughs> so again, a lot of stuff, six uh, volt batteries, four of them. I'm gonna quote you 12 to about 12 hours off a of full charge, depending on what you got going with your inverter. Um, but there's, you'll get that set up how you want it. Uh, Lippert jacks, four jack lines, right? So if this system ever fails is why I like this system. You've got a hydraulic down, but it's a hydraulic return. And you know, a lot of customers like to go down to Florida and if you let this jack down and it sinks down in the asphalt because it's really hot, you can pull it back out because it's a hydraulic return. Most coaches have a spring return. That's why I like this jack. So they're color coded. So the back right jack isn't working. Look at the top, it's just purple. You know what I mean? So take an Allen wrench, quarter turn, quarter turn. They ran in series. There's two more on the back. Take a wrench right here, crank the jack leg right up, tighten it back up, you're on the road. Because all you're doing is letting the piston open to get the fluid back into the overriding the electronic side of it. But again, if you've got a spring return jack, you're up underneath the coach taking a jack apart. So that's why we've been using this for years on all our products. All this stuff's on uh, Facebook yeah, we or, got, or YouTube. Yeah, uh, complete overrides on that. Yeah. Uh, again, if you hit these breakers, you're not gonna have dead batteries. So if you're leaving the coach for a while, good theft deterrent, different things of that nature, but be smart, man. You come out here and pop these open, you have a lot of memory in this coach. If, it's, if it sets outside with the disconnect off for a couple of weeks, it's gonna run the batteries down, okay? So just make sure you pop those back up and now you got power, okay? LP tank here, not much going on other than a great place for tools. I mean, that goes way back. You could use this for your dirty box or whatever you might want to call it. Stuff, you're going to keep stuff that's nasty, uh, you know, whatever that might be. You can throw it up in there and then you got your propane tank here. Let's go inside. All right, you know, as, as uh, we go through this, you know, <laughs> Uh, Dave's like, this is a lot of stuff to remember, write it down. And I think that's one of the things that I think, Dave, that maybe, you know, go back and watch this video, but everybody has a different use for the coach. And it's probably the best thing to do is everybody should make their own checklist on things to do, things to remember. And then it certainly helps them and they just get more familiar with it. As they well, that's the thing, man. You got to start somewhere and it is a lot to remember, but you have to um, keep it going. Sorry, yeah. I'm hot. No, you're fine. I understand. You're on a roll, man. All right. So let's go inside. Yeah. So basically what we'll do is um, 
probably start in the cockpit. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna let you guys get in. Yeah. And I'm just gonna sit right here. You can sit right there, sir. Uh, but with your jacks, <coughs> the next thing we're gonna do is do some cockpit training, you know. <laughs> so again, if you're gonna operate your jacks, make sure your engine's running and they've got this all fixed up, so I'm not gonna change that. And then make sure your clock's on your microwave. Again, you can run this without that, but the more power you have to your coach, the better your systems will operate. Okay, so know that. So when you start the engine and you put your parking brake on, when you turn this on, you can hit auto, okay? And that'll self-level, stay still while you're doing that. And then also you can go manual, okay? So I like the manual mode because you don't have all the sensors and stuff. There's three or four sensors in this whole coach. So know that, I mean, if you're in a parking lot and the nose is way down, you don't want to take the tires off the ground. So what you would do is go manual, take the front end, bring it up, then just touch the backs, you're done. So be smart with that. You can do that with anything with jacks on it, but manual is what I like to use. I mean, it's pretty easy. I mean, you can tell by looking at something or feel if your head's down to the back and you know, come up here and hit the button, raise it up a little bit. Um, so when you release the parking brake, your jacks will come up. But again, the last thing I always tell a customer, when you think you're ready, when you sit in this driver's seat and you're getting ready to put it in drive, don't. Walk around the coach one more time. Lock, make sure your basement door's locked. Come all the way around, make sure your awnings are in, and look down underneath the front, make sure your jacks are up. It only takes a few seconds to do stuff like that, and that'll work. This has a transmission brake on a Class A, so... Again, you guys out there doubt the V10, um, you need to stop. Um, I've got guys that are running this coach with a Yukon and a golf cart in the back. I've met a guy at Hershey and a, a guy had concern about a V10 with this much weight and a customer um, came up and stopped him in his tracks. The only thing this RV is not going to do is go flying up a mountain. So keep that in mind. I mean, you could go out and get there, do some pusher or whatever, but you're going to run the same as a diesel. 70, 75 miles an hour. And when you get to that mountain, yes, he's gonna go up at 60 miles an hour, but who, who really speeds through mountains, you know, or how much time are you gonna spend in that mountain situation? So again, so moving on, um, you got a lot of stuff, uh, auxiliary start, generator start, cabin lights, I mean, there's a lot of night shades, uh, different things, navigation, and a lot of this stuff you just dive into and figure out. You got the workstation, 110 outlet up front, we're fine there. And uh, you got your table up front. Dash fans, you know, really are supposed to go this way, in my opinion. Um, all your air conditioner tries to escape out, you know. So keep in mind, if you turn that towards that on a hot day, it'll keep your air conditioning back. Um, again, this is a Swintech system. Uh, there's your box, okay. So again, this has got two Swintech motors. So you're going to be able to um, fix that right there and know what's going on with it. Um, so there's a lot of good stuff. It's not flashing a code, so we're good. If you're ever flashing while you're not using it, um, we, you can reset it, and I'll go through that in a minute. Just more storage, power shades on the side as well. Let's keep moving. Um, inverter, your solar charger's right here. That's gonna be prepped down to your batteries with EGS still strapping in the roof to mount panels to if you wanna do that. But the hardware's already here, so just put a solar if you wanna go there or whatever you might be. Uh, again, this is going to operate, tells you everything. These pop right off, pop right back on, um, so that'll work for that. Induction cooktop, make sure you buy the right cookware. Uh, convection with the air cook, uh, to me, is a lot better than the oven. <laughs> this will operate all your stuff, and what I want to spend more time on is the system here. Um, so you got your home, and, and it's going to be hard to do because it's a little tight, but this will tell you everything to do. So we'll go through um, fixing this slide out right now. So that slide out, you got your rear arm bed slide. So what we'll do, so that's why it was doing it. They didn't finish it out. So remember to reset that box, guys. And so the same way you showed us on the uh, Ace yesterday, you can do the same thing with the multiplex wiring system. You're listening for six noises. Right. It's, it's the same. This has just got a high dollar... Uh, digital screen you can connect to your Bluetooth there's a lot of things you can do with that I'm not going to take the time to go into it uh, because it's all at your fingertips but just remember um, the worst thing you can do with our slides is not hold you know extend or track down so even if you come halfway in and go back out the main thing is listen 
let the motors finish out and then take your and it won't have to be reset now uh, we can go out and look but i guarantee you that box out there is no longer flashing because now uh, we got proper power my clock is on i've made sure i resync the motors so if you got a slide out that's doing is crooked it's going to be because you're not operating with your generator shoreline or you let go of a button too soon because there's just two motors in the sidewalls and they're not smart. They just spin and go out, spin and come in. So if you bring one slide in and it hits, another one hadn't finished. After you do that a few times, they get out of sync and that's when you just come in and do what I said. Um, residential reefer, I uh, got the booth dinette, that's gonna drop down. Um, fantastic vent, again, if you can view up standard um, rain vent covers. I mean, we're, I don't know if anybody else, some companies are doing that now, but that's standard on all our coaches. Uh, moving back, just um, we're, we're really finishing up. You got the loft here, and that's one of my favorite things about this coach, queen bed. And when this is in, yes, you'd have to crawl across the bed, but the only thing you're not going to have access to are these drawers. Uh, but the main thing is you got your, your sliding glass door here. You got all you need, uh, and you've got what, you know, you can do whatever. Now you can come here and take this off and you turn your master light off turn it on start the generator close the blinds hall bed ceiling all that moving on back <laughs> so these are optional you can bring this in or, or take it out but we have it in this look um, you know a guy says well I'm not gonna use you know this for a transmission or not a transmission a, a carburetor or nothing like this check out a guy I looked last night he's on our outlaw page it's a wet bar you know nice. what I mean? And I can't take it. That's his thing. So it's cool stuff. All Bluetooth power and uh, ground to jump off. If you have a dead battery, we've got you covered. Uh, that's all Bluetooth and it's operator out uh, the back and so so on. Now, and Mark, on the uh, is where is this its own separate battery or is that tied to the uh, chassis? That's going to go to house. Okay. Usually everything is tied into house from engine. Uh, your engine forward is tied to your chassis. But I always say steps back is tied to your house. Mm -hmm. um, and remember, you've got the emergency start to merge all that together on all our products. So if you've got a low volt on your engine, chassis battery, hold that button down, it jumps to your house, and you can start the engine, or vice versa, for yeah. the generator. Okay? Um, and so on. So this has got um, a couple of different looks. But what I want to do is, again, we're, get, we're winding down here, but maybe open this up and demo this. Um, but also, I'm going to make sure I'm not somebody out here. Is anybody out here? I don't want to hit them in the top of the head. We're going to push that down. Roll this out. Now it slid out on me. You think as many times I've done it, I'd be a little better at it. <laughs> So that's done. So again, power awning in the rear. These doors will float open. Pull a smart car up in here if that's your choice. Whatever you want to do. And then that'll close up, lock up. You can do all that different stuff. Uh, one last thing, the air conditioner. You know, I get a lot of questions. Um, they can't duct air conditioner to the front. So you guys that are wondering, if, if you're not going to do a motorcycle, I get it. We don't even... We designed Outlaw for several applications, but we can't design it where if somebody did crank up something, the fumes wouldn't go to the front. So uh, thank you for your time. Uh, if you got any other questions, we'll go through that. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm worn out. I'm done. Yeah. And no, then, Mark, this is great because there's a different way to do it. I know you got uh, a, a lot more uh, stuff to talk about, so I'll let you guys handle that. I'm going to wrap things up here. Well, and, and the main reason we yeah. do this is, is to help out. You know, I don't, I don't come out here... To, you know, I want to sell coach, right. but I want to sell the right coach. Right. Uh, so, no, that's the only reason we do these is to inform you and help you make a good decision. Right, and that's why we did it this way. I know we show you the new floor plans, and this way you kind of got to see, you know, what part of what Mark does here. And that way when you go out and you go to the dealer near you and they are so informed on the outlaw, it's probably because they learn from Mark. And so then they pass that information to you. 
And you can always go back and watch these videos. You can go to YouTube. You can get all the training on resetting your jacks, resetting your slide walls, all the manual overrides. We have that for you on YouTube. So hopefully you found this very, very useful. Um, and I know somebody said, you, you can. You can go ahead and watch it back and ta transcribe it and keep your own logbook. But I uh, learned something. Yeah. Sorry to stop you. No, no, no. I learned something new every day. So I do. That's all we're, that's yeah. all we're out here doing. And, and that comes from the heart. I mean, every time I go in the factory, so uh, guys understand that. I've been doing it a long time. But... The day I quit learning something in this business, I'm done with it because that's what I like about it. Yeah. it things change, but once you learn stuff, you're a happier camper. Yeah. So that's it. So there is such a thing as a happy camper there is. and a Thor Motor Coach product. That's, that's the way to go. So thank you guys yep. for letting us uh, tag along. We really appreciate it. Enjoy your drive back in the Outlaw. Uh, these are really fun to drive. Uh, I, I would probably put a couple of... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'd go by side by side or a couple dirt bikes. You, Depends. Yeah, probably a scooter. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello kitty scooter right that's more my speed so we got to wrap it up here thank you guys very much for watching and tagging along with us all week i have a lot of fun out here we are going to be in pomona in two weeks so uh catch us out there and next week we talked about a cooking demo we're going to do that out at our diesel club so diesel members we'll see you here very very soon again we're making a great wedding soup for you out there and i have a little extra bonus recipe in my pocket so when you have the grandkids come along or they're going to stop by and visit something that uh, you can make for them it's, it's probably going to stop most of our hearts but i think the little ones can probably uh, still handle a little bit of it uh, a homemade mac and cheese recipe out of this world so we'll see diesel club next week pomona we'll see you in two weeks and again for all the great tips that mark has passed on go ahead rewatch all these videos youtube facebook they're out there for you so you guys have a great day and we'll see you next week at our diesel club rally